Welcome back to Wood Turning with Dick. If you saw the last video, I did my very first segmented ring. And I kind of want to do something else with it on a different theme. So I figured out what I want to make in my head. I saw something and I'm like, I could do that. I could do that out of wood. And I could make it look really good in my head. You may not think so at the end. We'll see. But I'm going to use this piece of bog oak. I've got some splits through it. It's fairly narrow. It's not for, I could make numerous little bowls out of it, but I don't want to do that. I want to cut it all up and use it for a big segmented ring, big-ish. Um, also got this, which is a similar color that I can use. A lot of cracks in there, extend all the way through. So I've got some processing to do in order to get my little angled bits. I'm going to make them 16 pieces in total with separators and in order to make the one thing I want to make, I need to make two of them. You'll see as we go along. You know, you may get it from the get-go, or you may see it from the covering picture and think, ah, I know what he's doing here. So I've got to chop that lot up. Then, look at this. Rippled maple. A stunning ripple in this. Goes all the way through both sides. I only need a few small bits of this, actually probably the majority of this piece for the entire thing. That's for one of them. And I've got some gorgeous African mahogany, which again has got the ripple, not as pronounced as that one, but is really nice. That'll do for the other one. So let's get cutting. That's all my bog oak cut up. Each one of these is going to turn into a triangle. So any cracks like this, I'm going to glue up as I go. But that's one ring. That's another ring. Half of this is going in that. Half of this going in that. Same with the mahogany. One ring is going to be slightly smaller than the other. Not a lot. I'm not, we're literally talking this big and this big. Well, bigger than that, but I can't show you that. My hand's that far apart on camera. Next thing, I guess, is to cut my wedges. Out of the rest of the crack split stuff, I did manage to save some pen blanks. Total respect to people that do segmented work. Getting the angles right, getting the joins right. My Lord, you guys are wood-turning segmented gods. It's a beautiful day. I've got both doors open and I finished getting these so they're in a perfect circle. Both of them. Now, I haven't got a separator there, so that's that one placed in. The one that would normally be there, and then the opposite one for there. So that's why there's three sections. Now all I need to do is add some glue. Am I going to be brave enough to glue both of them to the same board? Well, that one's drying. That one and that one. I'm going to put a couple of holes in there for the stand. All right, that's had enough clamp time. Lovely. It's dry enough, I can run that around the bandsaw. Just run the planer across the top of that, just to bring down those couple of high ones that I haven't cut down, uh, to make it a bit more even when it's on the desk here. Because I think I'm going to put that on there. Hell, why not? Hell yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Okay, I think they're oh, virtually going to end up being virtually the same size, but we'll see. A bit of a high point there, which means one size is going to be quite thin. But let's just see what comes of it. Right, I think that'll do for this side. Just looking, ignore this for a minute. Just looking at this side, tiny bit of tear out there. Oh, that's a poor join. I'm gonna fill that with super glue dust. It's okay on the inside. Another poor join there, but that doesn't matter cause that bit whole piece there is coming out. Beautiful shimmer in that maple. 
All right, that'll do for that side for the minute. This side, a couple of flat spots on two. Yeah, not too sad. Almost there. Some big old cracks. Need to fill those. No, no, do I? No, I don't, because this side is coming to the point on the outside. So just going to finish making that roughly round. Not going to worry too much about the tool finish on this because it's coming to a point. Super glued up for now with some accelerator, so those cracks will be fine. Just going to clean this face off, clean the inner face off, and then we'll talk more. That's flat on the inside, beautiful. Got several cracks to deal with, as you saw from the bog oak to start with, very splitty and cracky. And a couple there, one here, one here. I do want to put a V in the dead middle here for gilding. Should I do that before or after the gluing? I think I'll do the gluing first, then do the V, then possibly more gluing, and then tidying up with the tool, then sanding. <laughs> Yay, all cracks filled. Just gonna run the Passing the tool over this side, just clean up the, the, the excess super glue and dust, and then put a little V in the dead middle. Now, the only challenging thing with doing this V is that I'm, the whole outside is going to become a V. I need to mark dead center. I'm not going to do it yet. That's a good idea, Richard. Well thought. One clean up cut on this outside edge to get rid of any excess super glue, and then I'm going to mark dead center with a pencil and then bring this corner up. That'll cut out any little join marks there. Great. That'll do as a halfway point. Slightly more this side to allow for any clean up on this edge. So now I can literally just take that corner off. Excellent. Just one crack to deal with here. The V I've decided I'm gonna leave out until it's on the button jaws. That's way I can measure exactly where halfway is because I don't want it to be off center. Before I do any more sanding, next job is to part it off. I'm gonna take this off and put it on the button chuck Then I can continually turn it round backwards and forwards to finish the other side, to sand it, to put the V in the middle there I'm talking about. Right, it's there. <laughs> I caught it before it flew off. And then I should be able to just... Nope, oh yeah. Ah, there you go. Huzzah. Righto, let's get this turned around. Ta-da. Lovely jubbly. Right, same as before. I'm not going to chat about it for ages because it's quite simple. You can see I put my little reminders here on what shape I need it. That's round enough, it's not perfect, but it is coming into a central V. All I want to be able to do is mark the center. It's about halfway, right? A question I've got, if I come in, am I gonna expose those holes? I think I'll be okay. Sander that to 600. I'm now going to put the sander sealer on, then denib it. But Tom, a friend of mine, asked me to show the joins. So while I'm putting the sander sealer on and showing off this gorgeous rippled maple, watch carefully this mahogany where my finger is. Watch. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? And that's before any sand or sealer or any finish. That's just sanding. Let's put the sand or sealer on and see, what, see how nice it looks. These joins are getting cut out. Actually cutting these completely away. So don't worry about the join there, Tom. Oh, blimey. That is beautiful. And I do like me some bog oak.
Hope you've taken note of these joins, Tom, because I think they're pretty damn good. There's the other piece of mahogany. And the other piece of maple. Bit more bog oak. And back to that pretty bit of mahogany. Look at that. Sorry. Got a load of sanding to do now and fill any gaps I might find in the outside surface here. Get that one finished on the button jaws and then put this one on there. Successfully fitted on the button jaws. Just need to take that corner off now. I've got to flip it round backwards and forwards to sand it. So I've only sanded it to 80 grit at the moment. I've got a nice halfway mark there. That's good. And I've got to put that V on the inside. That's just dust. The issue I've got is the buttons come out quite a long way. And whilst I want the V just in front of them, I don't want to catch the buttons. Do you know what? I don't, I think that, that that's pretty good. Oh, well, that one's finished. And I'm absolutely loving it. And before I do anything else, I'll take that off. Yay! Cool. Then all I need to do is bring that, that corner in. Not deliberately, but I've given it a little bit of a curve here. Not at all, it was just running the chisel. I thought it was running it straight, but I was actually putting a bit of a curve on it. Oh well, uh, I'm gonna sand that to smooth, but before I do that, I wanna whip it off, make sure the other side's very similar or the same. It's the nice thing about the button jaws, is it goes on exactly as you took it off. You know what? That's gonna do. I'll sand that. On both sides. I don't want to go any deeper on that inward curve because the holes that hold it up, I don't want them protruding out the sides. Uh, they come down to about here. So it's not that far off coming through and having a hole on that side, which I really don't want. Come back to you when I'm sand the sealering. One side, not both, because they don't want to bore you. <laughs> and then you've got me little V for the gilding. Can't forget me gilding. So on that dead halfway between there. And rather than sanding it some more just now, I'm literally going to flip it around and do the other side because I want to get it the same. See those joins okay, Tom? They pass muster, do they? nice subtle well some sometimes less subtle variants in the bog oak which is quite nice lovely i won't make you watch the other side as well because that's just silly and that will do for two bases i think lots of cracks in it but it doesn't matter too much not that bad no obvious defects I think I'll take the, take the top off of that, cut it down the middle, make up two blanks. That'll work. Now, I put the holes in here, didn't I? And I've just chubbed a rod in there just to show you the direction. If I had them straight, like I've done on previous pieces, then this half, forget that half, ignore it. Just imagine that on its own, sitting on two rods on a base, then it's going to be quite laid down, like, a, like an offset bowl, if you can picture that. So that we're actually, in reality, I want it more sort of that angle. And what I'll need to do is position this just right at the right sort of height, drill a couple of holes down at an angle, the same angle as this, into this bog oak. So that this comes just past and just past here. That's the plan anyway. I must admit I've been procrastinating about this because I'm nervous. I don't like being nervous. I put a lot of work into this and now I'm going to cut it up. No putting this back on the lathe after I do this. So look, it's coming together. 
you can see that bit's for that bit, that bit's for that bit. I've sanded all these to 400 grit, sand and sealed them and waxed them. Let them put my stamp number on the back. Very happy. There's my polished rods. Tap these rods in. Uh, so those in there. The next important job is I want that surface there to meet this surface here. So I've got to cut a V in the dead middle of this into there. Okay, makes sense? Good. The V will be here dead halfway. So I need to come 28 millimeters. Next thing is width. Just need the tiniest of marks. And draw a little line. Whew. Okay, in all seriousness, fingers crossed. There you go. Now I do need to clean those surfaces up there a little bit. So it's a nice bond, but this should, so that goes on there just like that. Needs a little bit of tweaking, but I think you'll agree that's looking quite elegant, especially with that angle, it's rather cool. And then what I need to do then is fix that in, then it's off to the north for gilding. Got to put the other one together as well. Get to gill both of them. I'll get you some beauty shots. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the creation.